It's good to come out to a place like this. It gives you a different perspective on the rest of your life. If you have a lot of activities, we have relatively few here. If you're tied up with a lot of people, you're with people that you're meeting for a little while and then everybody will be going their separate ways. So it's a lot less entanglement. For people who live alone, it gives you a chance to live with people who are practicing the Dharma, getting some perspective simply by being around them, and also from hearing the Dharma as well. Like that chant we had just now about the Four Mountains. It comes from a passage in the canon where King Vasenadi, one of the major kings of that time, came to see the Buddha in the middle of the day. And the Buddha said, well, where are you coming from today in the middle, in the middle of the day like this? What have you been doing? And the king is unusually frank. He said, well, I've been doing the sort of things that anybody obsessed with power would be doing, plotting, worrying about issues of state. In other words, basically up to no good. And the Buddha asked him, suppose someone were to come from the east and say there was a huge mountain moving in from the east, crushing all living beings in its way. Another reliable person were to come from the south and said, there's another mountain coming in from the south, crushing all living beings. Another person from the west, another from the north. Altogether, four mountains moving in from the four cardinal directions. And the Buddha said, considering the fact that human life is so hard to come by, what would you do? And the king said, well, what else can I do but practice the Dharma and keep my mind calm? And the Buddha said, I tell you, death is coming in. You don't know which direction it's coming from, but it's coming for you. When you think about that, what should you do? And the king said, well, what else should I do but practice the Dharma and keep my mind calm? In other words, the Buddha was bringing the king to his senses and teaching him an important principle, heedfulness, realizing that life is short. And what's really worthwhile in your life are the good actions you do, the good things you say, the good things you do, the good things you think. Good in the sense of being skillful, leading to true happiness, not harming anybody. Those are the important things in life. We tend to forget that. Our culture is based on heedlessness and encourages heedlessness. Forget about the fact that you're going to die by our product, they say, or by our experience, or scramble over other people to gain a position which you're going to have to lose. In the course of doing it, gaining the position, and if you don't get the position, you're going to get upset. If you gain it and start abusing it, you just create a lot of bad karma for yourself. You see this sort of thing all around us, and because we're surrounded by it, it becomes normal. And it's good to hear the Dharma to get a sense of re true normalcy. As someone once said, one of the amazing things about human beings is that we know we're going to die, but we act like we don't know. And it's good to reflect on it. When you go to a funeral and someone else around you dies, the Buddha has you reflect. You too are subject to the same, same fate. So he has you think about this, not to get depressed or, or discouraged. But to remind yourself that your time that you do have is valuable, so you want to make the most of it. And so it's good to reflect in your life this way, what parts of your life are really baggage that weigh you down, and which parts of, the, of your life are the ones that you want to encourage that have been atrophied for too long. It's like people who basically are told by their doctors they have eight weeks left to live or three months or whatever. And they suddenly decide to abandon all the things that are really frivolous in their lives and focus on things that are important. Well, it's good that they do that, but it's a shame that they have to wait to the last couple of weeks. As John Lee liked to say over and over again in his Dharma talks, we're like people who are going to be forced to emigrate at some point. And so we have to get our baggage in order. Prepare for the next 
our next trip. That means sorting out your things and figuring out what you can take with you, what you should take with you, and what's worth leaving behind. So it's good to have this dharmic perspective on your life. So you can think about what's important, what's not important, what missing areas have to be filled up, and what excess things can be stripped away. The best time to do that is at the end of a meditation session. Because the other important thing about coming here is that you're learning a skill, and you want to spend as much time as you can mastering the skill so you can take it home. You can't take the environment of the monastery back with you. But you can take the skills. And the skill we're working on here is learning how to get the mind come, to come to stillness. Because in doing that we gain both tranquility and we gain some insight into the workings of our minds. So that should be the main focus of your meditation, is how to settle comfortably in the body, work with the breath energy in the body so you can really settle, settle deeply into the present moment, get familiar with the territory here. And then once you're there, how to stay there. It's not all that difficult to get the mind quiet for a little bit, but you'll find that you run up against a lot of other things that are just all too happy to pull you away once you get settled down. And that's where a lot of the work in the meditation is, is appreciating the value of mental stillness and learning how to protect it, and not let all the other thoughts that keep yelling at you like insistent children, Mommy, 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 I'm, I've got a crisis right now. Everything for a little child is, is a crisis, and so everything for our thoughts seems to be a crisis as well. This has to be taken care of. That has to be thought through. You have to learn how to make a distinction between what's pressing and what's important, because a lot of pressing things are not important at all, and you have to learn how to press back. So that's the skill you want to master. But that's not the only thing you can gain from their, your time here. You can also stop and think about your life as a whole, where it's coming from, where it's going. The Buddha compares a person who's been meditating to someone who's up on a high tower, or you can think about being up on a top of a mountain, like those of you who climbed to the top of the mountain the other day. You could look out and you'd see far in the distance the countryside all around, things you can't see from the top of the hill here. And it's the same when you meditate. You get a different perspective on things. You can look at your life, the path that you followed through that far landscape, decide whether that's the path you like, what needs to be changed. The best time to do this is at the end of the meditation, after the mind has had some time to settle down and to master the skill of staying here, staying here. There are two ways of doing this. One is if you have a particular problem in your life that you want to think through, or get some new perspective on at least. Pose the question before you meditate and then put it aside. And throughout the hour, any time that question comes up, you say, no, put it aside, you're not ready for it yet. And then at the end of the hour, you can think about it. Just raise the issue. Sometimes it'll come up on its own and see what comes up in the mind, what kind of insights arise. There's no guarantee that everything that comes up in a still mind is going to be the truth, but you're in a much better position. Because when the mind is still like this, it's like opening all your drawers or having access to all the drawers where you've filed things away in the mind. And something may come up. The other approach is allowing whatever is going to come up after the meditation. Just sit here for a while. Don't be too quick to get up and go away. Or if you do get up, just go out and sit outside on the patio and see what comes up in the mind as you try to keep it still, even as you're out there. And something interesting, something unexpected may come up. It's the unexpected insights. Those are the really interesting ones, the ones that help give you a new perspective on things. Again, there's no guarantee. These are insights that you then have to try to put into practice to see if they really are worthwhile. But 
the more often than not you'll find that something new and helpful comes up in the mind. So take this opportunity to get a new perspective on your life, gain a new set of skills, or perfect some set of skills that you've been working on but need a little more work. So they can take you to that top of the mountain where you can see things clearly off into the distance and get a larger sense of your life and put things in proper perspective. <laughs>